<laughs> Welcome back to Qtronics, where I have all the gear and no idea. So today, something a little more simple than the previous video. I'm going to be replacing the SSD inside of my Steam Deck OLED with a two terabyte version. Now, I've never done this before, so I'm gonna be following the iFixit guide, and we can then see if there's anything in the guide that's a bit more difficult than the guide makes out, because often is the case, when it comes to an iFixit guide, is they're really good at documenting it, but certain things have little niggles and gotchas. So, right, without further ado, let's get into it. So, looking at the guide, the first thing it says we need to do is put the battery in a storage mode, apparently. So, to do this, we press the power button and the, vol and the volume up button at the same time. And we should get into the BIOS screen. And there we are. And then we go into Setup Utility, I believe. And then fan, uh, a power, and then battery storage mode. Enter that, and then I believe the console should turn itself off, which it looks like it has, and then we're good to go. Right, on to the actual starting point then. So, first things first, I've bought a MP600 Core Mini, two terabytes. Now this obviously has a one terabyte in it, but I just want more storage and a 1.5 terabyte SD card just feels a little bit too expensive when you can get a two terabyte for not much more. So there we go. I've also got a heatsink for it. So I'm going to bang that on at the same time. So first things first, let's get into the steam deck and I believe it's very simple and there are eight screws. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, and they are a T6 torque driver, so let's let's get into it. Right, let me get my electric screwdriver. Marion, don't look at it. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes I don't like opening a console up with the electric screwdrivers on the outside screws, but I think this is needed this time. Now, I'm on the blue mat here. I don't have a screen protector on this because it's the etched screen version, so obviously I don't want a screen protector on it. Right then, there's those lovely eight screws out. And then the, uh, the next thing to do, apparently, a peak of some kind down the sides. So obviously I want to be as careful as possible because this is my, uh, this is my Steam Deck. Not some random one I've bought. No. Here's what I nearly did wrong immediately if you haven't spotted it. I've got an SD card in. Make sure you take your SD card out, else you will snap it. Right, now we can carry on. So the guide suggests coming in here. So let's try that. Definitely use plastic for this, because as you can see there, I started to scratch. Not scratch, but it would definitely leave marks in the plastic. And this is what I mean when I say gotchas, by the way. Like, getting the case off on things is normally really hard. So, let's try and get this off without damaging it. Right then, we're finally open. So, back comes off, there's nothing on the back, so we can put that to one side now. If you want to clean up any sides where you might have uh, left a bit of white on, obviously I'm using a white pick. Right, and then the next thing is, the next thing the guide says is we need to disconnect the battery. So, if I can zoom in a little bit more, I'll show you. There's a little tab here. So it says just pull that ever so slightly, Just pull it directly away, and that should pull. Apparently that should pull the battery out. It 
Doesn't seem to want to pull it out straight away though. So I think we're gonna to have to just keep wobbling it and eventually, hopefully, there we go, it's out now. So if you can see, it's just popped out there now, right? And as you pull that out, it does push on the metal a little bit, so don't worry about that. But I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer now as we're getting into it again, and hopefully you can have a better picture. So the next wire we need to get rid of is this big long wire here, which is the controller board for the right hand, the left hand side. So over here, there's a little flip tab. Again, as I've said on more videos, you've seen it. Nice and gentle with these. We don't want to break anything. Just get in, get a bit of a pop, and there you go, it snaps open. That's all we need. Now lift up, and that's it. That cable is now out. And now we need to pull it off the heatsink here. So be very careful, apply very little pressure, and just let it come back. On itself. Just a bit of adhesive here. You want to apply a little bit of pressure at a time. Nothing too hard. That's what she said. <laughs> we don't want to bend this cable in any way else. We're going to be needing a new cable. Right now that's done. Oh, we can just put it out the way over here. I'm just going to rest it under there a second and then we can pop the heatsink off. There are two screws for this, one at the top here and one down here. They're also T6, T6s, so same screw we used to open it. How very strange. It's almost like my T600. Ha! Huh. Well, my T6 screw bit actually failed then. Let me see if a 5 will do it. It has come out of a five, but I think by the looks of it, yeah, my T6 bit has just failed on me, so that's nice. So hopefully, I've got a T6 bit in this set, but anyway, a T5 gets it open in a pinch, and then we can just pop the heatsink up. Sorry, there is a little bit of tape just down here, which is one of the wires are attached to it. And there we go, heat sinks off. No thermal paste or anything. And we can fully, when we reassemble it, all we need to do to get this to work is just to push back down on here to get the battery to go back in. Obviously, as we're not doing that at this moment in time, we can just hold off it. I'm just gonna move that battery away completely. Right, and then we're on to the SSD, which is this little thing down here, tiny. And again, that is a T6 screw bit, so hopefully my T5 will do the job here. And now the metal on the outside is just in uh, an RF shield or an SD shield, so we just push that out. And if I touch this ribbon one more time, I'm gonna throw it in the bin. For God's sake, man, stop moving. And then there you go, that's the initial SSD inside of a uh, Steam Deck. All right, then let's put that safe. And I'm going to put my new one in. So, as I mentioned, I have a little heat sink kit. I will put a link in the description so you can find these. You know what? It's a bigger SSD. Let's put an heat sink on it. It's not going to hurt it. So, I've got some thermal pads here. And now, if you've watched any of my stuff before, this is probably the hardest part for me. And that's to get sticky plastic off things. So from what I've seen, the best way to do this with the heatsink is we use two of the little bits that come in the packet. So you put one here and one there, not to cover the hole, but just to get enough so we actually have thermal paste on there. So let's get that sorted first. Put a piece on. Now, like I said, this can come over the hole ever so slightly like that so that's fine so as you can see it's just come over the hole ever so slightly which is fine and 
hardest part now is getting this stuff off. There we go, and then we can put our SSD in there. There we go, it should look something like this. We can move it around a little bit if we need to in a minute. But that's it, and then I'm going to take the plastic off. And I want to get this back inside the heat shield, hopefully. You might have to poke the heat shield up now and put some new tape on it, just to, just because the heat sink obviously is a bit bigger. RF shield's on there, and then we can put this back in place. So you have to come in at an angle just to get it to sit in and then you can push down on it. And then we can reintroduce our screws. Now I will put a link in the description to show you how to clone this. I pre-cloned this hard drive prior to doing this as I don't want to have to reinstall everything. You can do a fresh boot and if, uh, if you ever want to see that how that's done let me know and I'll uh, get a video out. There you go, SSD's in there. And now we just do the reverse of installing things. So I'm gonna line this battery back up so we can push it back down when the heat sink is good to go. So where's our heat sink? Here it is. There's a little wire here that sits on top of it. So just make sure you're not covering that. Again, the guide, I'm not sure the guide actually mentions that to be honest, but again, it's such so little a niggly, like I said, things can be missed. But I fix its guides and only absolutely banging. It's just there's little bits and bobs where it says open the case and you're like, ah, oh, you've told me how to open it, but you didn't tell me how hard it would actually be to open it. Now, that's the part I always struggle with guides is how much force you put into something. So again, you want to tighten these screws down. Just so they're, they're hand tight. And then we can reintroduce the board wire. So you probably want to stick it back down how it was before. It should just naturally sit in the place. Nice and simple. And then we can connect it. I'm gonna get it in place first and then stick it down. Just because I think I've stuck that down ever so slightly wrong. The ribbon has a little bit of a jutty out part, so it'll just sit in place nicely. And we can stick that down. And then we can push this battery back in, which again, as it mentioned on the guide, if you just push down on the plastic part, you should feel it go in. You might this spludger might not be working for this. Do I have a straighter one? Might be able to use this. You just want to push on the plastic part of it. So see if I can get you to. So there's just a little plastic rim of the of the thing here. You just want to push on that. Can't see. See, not not as simple as you think it's going to be. Yep, it does feel like it's in. Right, I'm just going to turn it on quickly and just make sure that it does turn on. And then we'll put it all back together. Right, we'll turn it off and get the battery the back back on. Now we know the battery's in. And we'll go from there. Might just take a little time booting because obviously I put a new brand new hard drive in there. So let's get the back back on. Now before I screw those screws in, I am going to try and get this to turn on. Ah, so I'm an idiot and it says the Steam Deck will not respond to button presses when in this mode. So I'll need to plug it into a charger. 
Oh, it did come on the screen then for a second. So let's screw back up and we'll plug it into a charger and see if it's all working. If you saw on the threads as well, they had a bit of blue Loctite on, so they're not going to just randomly come out. Right then. Let's plug it into power and see if it all comes on and see how successful we were. My SD card back in. It's flashing, so hopefully that's a good sign. We have a life at least. Now I've just got to hope that my uh, my clone worked and I've not got to reinstall the software. There we go, it's verifying the installation. So, one of the interesting things when you clone a hard drive for Steam Deck, it only clones the one terabyte portion. And apparently on first boot, it will then extend it to two terabytes. So let's see if that actually is the case. Right then. It's obviously registered the fact that I uh, am logged in now. So let's have a look at the settings and see what my hard drive is saying. And there we go. 900 gig free of 1.8 terabytes. Uh, that's a shame. If you do this, your SD card becomes almost corrupted, so anything you want on the SD card, you'll need to download again. But, oh well, who cares? Sorry guys, um, <clears throat> just jumping in there quickly, on the video I'm about to say the SD card had to be re-downloaded, it didn't. When I clicked on it, it just re-registered all my games again, I just pressed A on it, and it almost refreshed it and went, oh yeah, sorry, those games are linked to this account. So, you don't need to refresh the SD card. Anyway, I'll pass you back on to past me, see you in a sec. Right, there we go guys. Thank you very much for joining us. Please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel to grow. I know this was a bit of a shorter video this week, but off the back of that Titan last week, I needed something that was a quick, easy win. And I've always wanted to put a new hard drive in my Steam Deck. So hopefully that's helped you guys out there as well. You've seen the little gotchas that the guide doesn't tell you about, but all in all, nice and easy, nice and simple. Anyways, thanks for coming. Catch you next time. See ya.